So, uh, yeah, unlike uh, pretty much most of the papers that we have covered in this reading group, this is not a distributed systems paper. It's, it's actually an operating systems paper. Um, but I, I found it interesting in the sense that uh, it does kind of borrow some of the ideas from the distributed systems. Uh, and you know, usually uh, our community, distributed systems community, borrows the stuff from operating systems. So this time around, it's kind of a little bit different. Um, so what this paper is concerned about is um, you know, the, the replication of data structures in, in, uh, in operating system kernel. Uh, and why is this a problem? Well, uh, you know, mainly because we have very big computers right now. There's lots and lots of cores, uh, multiple CPUs, um, and that means that uh, you know these computers, well, not only they have a lot of cores uh, and, and a lot of CPUs, um, they these different CPUs they have their own memory controllers and things like that. So, um, depending on where your code is running on which core and which CPU, you may have different access latencies to different portions of memory, right? So uh, the the, the term for this is a non-uniform memory access uh, uh, NUMA. Uh, so, you know, when you have this, obviously, um, you know, if you put your data structure in in one place in memory and it needs it, it is needed in some other by some other processor, right? Uh, you know, like physically, maybe different socket, uh, it will cost you a lot more in terms of latency to get to this uh, data structure. And if this is a shared data structure, uh, then uh, you know, it's not only like non-uniform speed accessing this data structure by different uh, uh, entities that need it. Uh, it's also like adding the uh, more overhead uh, to, to the sharing, right? Because now maybe you have to keep a lock for longer because someone uh, needs this data structure who is on a different socket. Uh, so it takes more time to, uh, to access this. Um, so traditionally, uh, I should say more traditionally, like uh, you know, our Linux operating system, for example, is um, more or less designed as the monoliths uh, on operating system kernel, where these data structures they are shared between all of the cores, all of the CPUs, right? So that's uh, you know that that creates problems. Um, obviously, we, we we share them with you know we solve the concurrency by adding locks, um, you know, adding different mutexes and. and doing all kinds of concurrency controls, but it slows things down. So another uh, kind of level of uh, uh, research, I guess, in, in operating system, a different type to approach the kernel design is this um, multi-kernel idea where you actually replicate the, the data structures, um, maybe to different CPUs or different uh, NUMA nodes, um, and you, uh, you know, essentially work from these replicas of these data structures. And uh, traditionally, these multi-kernel approaches, they would uh, you know, handle the concurrency, uh, concurrent access uh, via the message passing, right? So if you do need to orchestrate the concurrent access to this replicated data structure, you would orchestrate it with the message passing, maybe uh, I don't know, create locks and stuff like that. So you, uh, everything is orchestrated with the message passing uh, while you operate on this uh, distributed multiple copies of the um, of the replicated state of these data structures. So um, this paper, the authors claim that this message passing is kind of difficult. Uh, it, it's complicated, uh, and uh, sometimes it's not even performant. Uh, so what they say is, uh, you know, why not uh, do something simpler? Why not uh, kind of pretend like we have this shared, um, like a single shared structure, right? Uh, a, a, sh a single shared log uh, that we can use to build this replicated uh, states, right? Replicated structures. So instead of using the message path and, and uh, coming up with some kind of ad hoc uh, way to coordinate all of these different um, uh, copies of the uh, of, of the replicated state that you need in the kernel, this replicated data structure, um, you have a log structure that is like a single log that is shared by everyone uh, that sits in someone's memory, right? So it's, it's not a replicated log here. 
um, but the the actual state, the data structures that support being supported by this law, they are replicated. So one way um, I can think about this uh, in terms of like distributed systems background is this log is like a, a you know a Kafka system, right? So um, yeah, like not even distributed way, but um, you know, just uh, the way I I, I see it is, is more like a, a published subscribe system, right? The the producer consumer. So um, the only way for you to replicate, to update the shared state of the data structure in this um, multi-kernel uh, that they call in this paper uh, on uh, an R kernel, um, and R stands for uh, node replication. Um, so yeah, the, the, the way to update the, the state is by running, uh, is by getting the operations from the log, right? So if you need to update the state, you look at the log, uh, if, if there are some uh, operations in the log that you haven't consumed that this particular um, node, uh, you know, set of, yeah, like this particular CPU hasn't consumed, uh, then you can, uh, uh, you know, fetch it from the log, update your state machine, and then operate on the state machine. Um, on the other hand, if, you know, if you're fully up to date, then you don't need to do any kind of shared stuff. You just operate from your copy of the, of the, of the state machine of the, of the replicated um, data structure. Um, so, uh, obviously, if you need to update uh, the data structure, the replicated data structure, uh, you would write to this uh, shared log. So, um, now, they do talk about things like, uh, you know, uh, things like having too many cores, right? So, um, I think in, in their evaluation, they say that like, the, the machine that they used in the evaluation had up to 96 cores spread out across four different sockets, right? So um, they, um, they're not saying that this log has to be shared across all of the 96 cores and all 96 cores when they need to write to this shared log, they need to compete for it. That would be you know, as inefficient probably as this monolithic uh, example. Uh, so instead of having all 96 cores share the log, they uh, say that uh, each socket, each Newman node is going to have its own um, a shared data structure, and um, this um, like updates to the shared log. They're going to be kind of coordinated by the uh, by, by each replica, by each new node, right? So um, for this coordination, uh, they use some so called uh, they call it node replication, and uh, in particular, this coordination at the new node uh, is done with the flat combining. Let's see if they have a better image here. Okay, so um, the idea here is uh, like let's say you have uh, twenty uh, whatever twenty four uh, twenty eight cores right uh, CPU for example um, uh, and you have like four of them uh, no. was it twenty four I don't know it doesn't matter so so you have like a multi core CPU um, that can that, that essentially makes up this one replica. Uh, that uh, exists in, in one CPU's memory, right? So it's one NUMA node. So when uh, some thread in this, uh, running on this CPU, right? One, one of these 24 cores, essentially when, when one thread needs to update um, this data structure, um, uh, it, uh, um, it, it tries to become uh, what's called the combiner uh, in, in this kind of uh, uh, architecture. So it tries to acquire, um, uh, like it, it, it locks itself uh, essentially. Uh, okay, how do I put it better? So, so it will try to get not only unique access to the log, uh, but also unique access. Um, like it, it will prevent all other threads in the same. A new node in the same CPU from trying to write at the same time. So these other nodes, if they are not in the combiner role, which is kind of like a leader, then they can um, they they um, announce what they want to write. Uh, but the combiner is then because it has the unique access to this lock at this point. Uh, the combiner is going to take this um, all of the um, announcement that uh, hey thread one needs to write something, thread two needs to write something else, uh, and it will. Uh, combine them into like one batch. So, so this combiner is kind of like a batching system. 
So it batches all of this outstanding requests, outstanding operations to the shared data structure, uh, and then acquires the the global log that is going to be the uh, global log, the, the mutex, the write log, uh, that will um, essentially set it as the unique writer at this time to the uh, the shared log data structure, and then it will put this batch into the shared log. Um, and, and similar kind of happens when you need to read, if someone needs to read from this log to update their uh, shared data structures, uh, like when they when they read the data structure, uh, they again, um, will uh, there will be a combiner that will acquire the log, the unique access to the shared log, shared log to the shared log, um, uh, fetch the data that um, is missing from the replica, apply it to the um, local uh, in-memory replica, um, and notify the other threads waiting uh, on the read results that they can essentially perform the operation, you know, finish the read from the local state. Um, they do go and explain uh, a little bit more complications like concurrent node replication. So um, the, the node replication approach uses one shared log. Uh, so it still has quite a lot of contention because only one um, uh, uh, combiner can get access to this shared log at a time, right? So uh, they say that in, in some examples, um, you may have operations that are uh, commutative, right? So they, it doesn't matter in which order they execute with respect to each other. So, um, you yeah, know, non-conflicting operations, essentially. So they say, if you have non-conflicting operations, uh, then we can run, we can uh, replicate them in this replicated uh, like data structure through the concurrent node replication, uh, which actually uses multiple shared logs, right? So for Conflicting operations, if two operations are conflicting, they will go to the same log. Uh, but if the two operations are not conflicting, they can be, uh, uh, they, they can go into different logs, uh, which means that uh, a different combiner, like, you know, multiple combiners can be involved. So you add a, a little bit more parallelism by having multiple logs and multiple combiners that can be active uh, at the same time on their respective logs. Um, so the way I kind of high level distributed systems perspective uh, or I see it is like a, a Kafka topics, right? So instead of one uh, like total order log, you, know, you have like multiple uh, uh, shards of that log in the topic and you can uh, uh, yeah, essentially build your data structures around this. Uh, uh, you know, rely on the parallelism of having multiple uh, multiple shards, multiple partitions. Um, so this replication, this log-based uh, replication, this log-based state machine that creates multiple copies of this data structures of the state for the for the kernel um, uh, on different uh, processors and different human nodes um, is used um, to implement a few components of the kernel. Uh, in particular, they have implemented the, the virtual memory manager, um, uh, a file system, which is like an uh, in-memory file system, uh, and a scheduler, right? So um, um, I suspect they, they, they can probably implement more components, but this would be the, the biggest components of the, of the kernel uh, anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, um, they, they, they pretty much implement it as this, uh, uh, like state machines the, the, uh, that, that have been update driven by uh, a single log. Um, so the operations go into the log, uh, each replica consumes the operations and brings their copy of the replicated uh, state machine that maintains this data structure up to date and so on. Um, they do talk about uh, like these components in, in, in the greater detail. Um, and um, they do quite, they do, uh, they perform quite an extensive evaluation. So they have implemented this in an actual kernel um, that is um, mostly POSIX compliant, uh, which allowed them to run uh, a few real applications. Uh, for example, they did uh, evaluate uh, their kernel uh, in uh, level DB. Um, and uh, like they compare it level DB running on a node replicated OS and ROS um, 
uh, and uh, on Linux, right? So, and, and I suppose that they use the, their in-memory file system uh, implemented in their um, implemented in their uh, kernel versus the, the temporary file system in Linux, which you know, I suppose also in memory. Um, so they claim you know, quite substantial improvement in performance, especially as uh, the number of cores in the server uh, increases. And in, in this example, they had uh, 28 cores uh, divided over two sockets uh, and you know, I expect over two uh, NUMA nodes, you know, by, 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 as a consequence, as a consequence of having two sockets. So there is quite a lot of improvement, and you know, you can kind of maybe low key see, uh, or maybe this is I'm imagining, it, but um, it seems like the 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 performance improvement of adding more cores in Linux um, actually decreases here as. Uh, number of cores increases because now we have non-uniform memory access situation you know, to two NUMA nodes versus the uh, NROF that can scale actually a little better for a little bit longer. Um, they have some other examples that were uh, interesting. Um, I think they used another real example somewhere. Um, yeah, memcached. Um, the, the throughput comparison again versus Linux, you know, they managed to improve the throughput. Um, in this example, I think they tested uh, uh, page insertion. So, uh, yeah, like uh, virtual memory stuff, uh, the uh, map data structure, maybe. Um, the interesting thing is, uh, like, uh, interesting to me, uh, probably not so much for the operating systems people. Uh, but uh, it was interesting that uh, Linux um, uh, performance uh, dropped in this like little, very artificial example actually, uh, as the number of cores increased. So in, in this example, I think they uh, kind of uh, reinserted the same uh, uh, page like multiple times, like pointed to the same piece of uh, actual memory. Uh, versus their performance stayed flat when using one uh, log, um, and uh, you know, managed to the bull and managed to improve above the the barrel fish operating system, which is the the multi uh, kernel one. Uh, when they use their like sharded log idea, you know, having multiple logs for non conflicting operations. Um, yeah, I think I'll stop at this point. Um, there are a few examples on how like latency is better and, and things like that. Um, but uh, yeah, I'll stop at this point.